Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live with Movie Talk at Press Play Cinema. Today, we're going to talk about an amazing film that is just so you know, showcasing at pressplayhere.com. And we're going to speak with director Keith Gowers. So we're going to wait for him. He's having a little trouble logging in, but he is on his way. While we wait, let's play that trailer for you. Let's go. You've been charged with speeding and reckless driving. How do you plead? I don't know. I find you guilty, and I'm revoking your driver's license until you're 18 years old. Wait, ser no, 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 seriously? Seriously. Party tonight. Hey, Kate, can I go? Um, no. And do you want to know why you can't go? Because we don't want you there. We don't even want you here. Don't you ever call me bro. I'm your father. Oh, so now you my dad? But you only come around once a month like the pool boy? Don't you ever talk to me like that. Or what? Ava, what are you doing? Go away! You're actually cutting yourself? No! Get out! I pinned you in this- I hate don't him! Don't say that, that's not good, just- I will consider dropping the charges and reinstating your license if you and your brother attend a very special camp for a weekend. There it is. Success camp. Maybe I can help you. Don't be a friend. Be her mother. Where are we? Um, a retreat center, sweetie. Cannot have it your way. Well, guys, that was our trailer for Success Camp. We got started. Oh, wait. How many voices? Hi, Rose. Right here, we got Keith Yours. How are you doing? Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I, I, I just, uh, I, I, I was just uh, watching that myself recently, and. Uh, it was really a good movie. We had a good time. No, l listen, I've I've seen it twice. Once by myself because I was trying to see if it was appropriate for the cho uh, to showcase on the platform, and then I liked it so much that I played it for my daughter. I said, "Listen, I'm taking you there if you ever." <laughs> <take> me. <laughs> She's like, "Um, okay." <laughs> well, it's really a pleasure to have you here. I love this film. I love the message. I love um, the. Not just not just the message, but it's the initiative to bring that um, discipline, not just to the kids, but for the parents. Because at the end of the day, if we're not disciplined, our kids will not be disciplined. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Who knows me knows that I go straight to the straight to the uh, nitty gritty. So let's do that right here. Let me put let's some over here for you, and I'm gonna go for the first question right here it is and question number one what inspired you to create a film centered around the theme of troubled families seeking hope and transformation at success camp well thank you rose i actually was um i've been friends with uh, the founder glenn ellison for over 20 years i'm 30 years law enforcement and I started sending families to him or referring families to him back in the early 90s when he started this program. And it has, uh, I always had a good uh, response from the parents. 
So, and then when I started seeing what the actual camp was about and I went out there personally, I got involved and became security for him. And, uh, cause not all kids want to go to this kind of camp, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the parents actually are involved with the kids and what you see in the movies portrayed is actually what happens out of the camp. Now we, we did some movie magic with certain scenes, but the thing is, is that we have, we've taken stories that 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 they have dealt with and really and really put them to a movie theme like this uh but i saw success as a law enforcement officer i saw much success with the parent help center and mr glenn ellison no listen you see me choking up on my words because i really don't have the exact words to express how much i like this film it's like i've seen comedy movies about the same concept but not serious and this is a little more serious and it seems like it inclines a little bit into the faith-based community of filmmaking and i love that so uh kudos for that well thank you i actually uh we partnered with uh, uh jc films and, and their founder jason campbell and and we did this film because um well he liked the story as well and he wanted to just uh do the film and mr ellison had been looking for a film to be made eventually and that's what uh we just kind of came together I was working with them at the time and we put this together here in our local area and this has been a very successful camp for over 20 years now international families have actually sent their kids here and the parents came with them as well <clears throat> yeah i was going to ask you that because um last thing i heard about a camp like that was in um uh dr phil <laughs> which already uh has been proven that it was like an abusive environment Mm -hmm. So this kind of uh, depicting actually shows us that that kind of camp can be a possibility and not just a possibility, but it can actually bring forth results. So well, that actually, yeah, yeah, actually being involved with it and coming from a law enforcement background, I had to make sure there was no kind of those kind of things happening. And I can assure you being out there with many, many families and seeing the success I've seen over the years, uh, coming from my background, I could tell you I've never seen any abuse. The, some of the stuff we did in the in the in the movie, it just really is it's kind of of a point to where we take you so far, but we don't really they don't ever put their hands on children or anything like that. It's just uh, uh, we 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 actually talked about it before we did some of those scenes, and but people said it'd be fine, and we've had more success uh, response from that film uh, just with people actually. Well, some of the kids have straightened up by not wanting to go to that camp for real. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of paid off that way too with some of the actors we had. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Now let's go to our second question. Our second question is, can you share any personal experiences or insights that influence the development of the characters in the film, particularly the parents and children? Well, we took, we didn't take exact stories. Uh, we took uh, similar things that have happened with certain families and put them together in those character buildups uh, that we did. Uh, everything you saw in there probably has, uh, if Mr. Ellison was with us tonight, he'd probably assure you that we've dealt with pretty much every one of those uh, over the years. And we just kind of put our heads together and kind of took a little bit of here, a little bit of there from that story and, and kind of built a character um and and we have some good actors and actresses playing those parts as you could see Braden and uh shane sorbo kevin sorbo and sam sorbo's children they they loved being with us out there and working with that movie no um uh listen uh i mean this is a, this is a present for everybody that's watching today because just so you know after we finish this interview i'm playing the whole movie for everyone to watch if that's okay with you, right? That's okay with you? It's fine. It's out there on YouTube anyway. I so it. I need everybody to watch it as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, today, uh, it's not just movie talk, it's movie night too. And you know, and Rosa, I, I just say that even if a family can watch that and talk about the issues that they may have going on mm -hmm. uh, and just talk about how can we change, how can we make it better? You know, our world is, is just all mixed up right now, it seems. But the family unit, you know, being in law enforcement, and I have a ministry to dads for the last 20 years, and I always try to encourage them. I says, listen, I said, the family should be the safest place that, that a, a child should be able to go because you're not going to get all the time safety in schools and and in public and sometimes in churches, the way things are going with, with uh, just all the 
the, the crime we have going on out there, we have to make sure our families are safe, Rose, and our children can come to us because if they can't come to us, they're going to go to somebody. Exactly. That is completely true because, hey, um, I was a child too. And at some point so I didn't I. know who to turn to and I went to the wrong people. So yeah, I'm a vivid example of that. And thanks to that experience, I know now that I have to be present in my kids' lives a hundred percent. You know, Rose, I, I tell you though, just to kind of a backstory with me, my dad died when I was 11 years old. He died behind me one night. And um, I, I just decided that I would take care of my mom. So at 12 years old, I became, you know, basically the man taking care of mom. And I took care of her for a long time, for 46 years until she passed. And I think that if we, we decide that if, okay, our family, every family has issues. We know that, okay? Growing up by myself as a young kid, I could tell you, I, I started going the wrong way too. And then I realized from a policeman that he told me that I needed to be changing directions. So here I did. And then I worked out being a police officer for 30 years, helping kids. So, you know, if you go down the right road, you might just wind up helping other people along the way. Well, I got two things to say to that. I'm sorry for your loss and thank you for your service. Thank you so much, Rose. I Let's get back to our third question right here. Our third sure. question is, in what ways do you believe the film can serve as a mirror to viewers, encouraging them to reflect on their parenting styles and the impact it has on their children's behavior? I think, Rose, if we just go back to the, what we were just discussing and the way of how parents and children could, could view this movie, could they look at themselves and say, what is causing the friction in our own homes? What's causing the friction between us? Communication is the key. I mean, God gave us a mouth, right? And um, I mean, it's better to, to serve each other with love than it is with hate. And I think that if we just sit down and talk about it from family member to family member and nobody's perfect. I mean, I'm, I'm way up there in age and I'm not perfect, <laughs> but I can tell you my daughter who's also, I mean, she's in her forties now. She still calls me and talks to me about certain things going on uh, in her own family, sometimes with her children. And I say, you got to remember back that when you were a child too. So we work through those. So I think if we figure out what's wrong with us and how we can help the family unit come together and be stronger, I think that'll help us uh, kind of figure out the, the whole family dynamic. And, and, and when you look at a film like this, you kind of think, okay, yes, it's a movie, but there's some real stories in, in how we can we can stop some of that friction so we don't have to go to success camp one day, you know? No, but at, at the end of the day, I think something like success camp is something that we need in this generation right now. I think it would be vital for kids to have not just an outlet other than family, you know, because sometimes family go through situations like just like we just uh, exchanged. Um, and when they go through this through these type of situations, they have little to no trust to, in their parents. So what if there was a camp in which they can not just straighten their behavior, but they can also reflect on gaining trust from the people that really matters, you know? So that is really insightful in this film. And um, I did love how at the end, everybody uh, had their bonds straightened up and it, it was just beautiful. It's a beautiful film. Well, without giving the ending away for those who haven't seen it, but at the end, when you saw some of that hugging, that really happens. We've seen that happen. I've seen it with my own eyes happen in real life. So it, there's a lot to that success camp that's very, very, uh, very truthful in, in what you've seen in the film. That's right. Well, let's go to our fourth question right here. Our fourth question is, how did you approach the challenge of authentically portraying the struggle and growth of each family within the constraints of a film narrative? After we talked with Mr. Mr. Glenn, the, the founder, and we heard some of the stories, the true stories, he's got a book that thick of testimonies of the issues that they used to have in families and how they've come come across, you know, 
a little bit later into life after they work through this program. See, this program is not about just the children. This is about the parent being involved with the children. Okay. So this is the only camp. And like he says in the movie, this is the only camp where that he knows of that parents come to the actual camp. So um, the parents learn while they're while their students or their kids are learning about being successful in life outside, they are learning how to be a successful parent on the inside. And then they come to a realization that, yes, um, uh, I, it might be part of my problem, too, you know, and how they're parenting. So but uh, we, we came to those struggles because because we, we talked with Mr. Glenn of, of some of the real things that are going on in families today. And uh, the approach to it is just simply exactly what you saw there i mean that's that's how the camp is run like i said we've added a little movie magic with some of the scenes but yet it is true to life almost in the way of how people react to the camp once they go to a weekend or even his boys summer camp which is 21 days because 21 days to break a habit right so they try to and they bring out so many people so many successful people to talk to these kids because so many successful people had the same problems with their kids and they brought their kids there. We've talking about NBA players, we're talking about NFL players. I mean, family's family, right? People, people that, that they feel inspired, that they look up to. Absolutely. That's beautiful. That's beautiful that that person that you look up to can come and tell you, hey, you know, stay in school, uh, bring honor to your parents. Uh, it's it's going to pay, it's going to pay, it's going to pay forward. So right. it's going to is it's gonna uh, give you all that grace back. So all you gotta do is be patient and do the right thing. That's beautiful. Uh, to all the viewers that are here with us, if you have not seen the film, uh, we're gonna play it right at the end of this interview. So please stand with us. There's gonna be a lot of gems that are gonna be dropped here about filmmaking and about this journey. So guys, I hope you're enjoying this because again, something that I wanted to mention that you just, uh, talked about. I love the fact that this was a whole research. You guys didn't just come up with the idea. It's something that has been with you guys for a long time and it has built up to the point that you guys said, this is an issue that needs to be addressed. So let's make something beautiful in the world of audiovisuals for everybody to absorb that message. And I love that. I love that because the slogan of our company is there to inspire and you guys dare to inspire. Mm. Let's go ahead. Well, thank you so much, Rose. It's uh, it's been we've got a lot of comments about the film, um, and and I tell you, it's just Mr. Mr. Glenn and and his wife Sheila. They they've been doing this for 21 years. They don't even take a paycheck. I mean, they they put everything they can back into the camp, and they were very successful, of course, until 2020 happened, and then uh, things started leveling off for a while. So they're trying to build back up too, but they're still going at it. Every month they have a success camp except for December, and then they have a, a camp in the summer actually for 21 days. <clears throat> Wait a minute. So this is not just a film. This is something that actually happens. How can how can a parent find the information to submit their children into success camp? Everything they need to know, they can go to the parenthelpcenter.com. The parenthelpcenter.com. They, they've got everything on there and they just kind of read through it and see how they can uh, uh, have their kid come to the camp if they want for a month or even for the summer camp. Well, thank you for that information. I'm just entering that in the chat so that people can click on that link and find out more about it. Now, that being said, let's go to our fifth question. Our fifth question is, what specific strat strategies or techniques did you use to evoke empathy and understanding from the audience towards the characters, especially when dealing with sensitive themes like discipline and family dynamics. You know, I can't say that we really had any strategy. We just did what we know to work. And we just actually, we, we just put it to film the best way we could. But we understood we had, we had 600 folks at our uh, premiere and and people just wouldn't leave because they were sitting around talking about it you know, or standing around talking about it because there was so much involved with it we had parents that had been involved with the, with the camp for years we had students that had been involved with the camp that are now volunteering for the camp 
We had uh, dignitaries uh, show up for the film. I mean, there were so many people there that when, when they talked about, man, I just, I never knew this was even going on because we sold a lot of tickets online as well. So, but the strategies, we didn't actually plan for anything specific for the actual film other than true stories. Uh, and like I said, we took stories here and kind of put it with another story and kind of built those characters out. And, um, but I'm, I'm hoping to, with another project I'm working on, I'm hoping to bring some more of true stories into those once we get permissions that we can add into our episodic film that we're doing. <clears throat> Oh, that's awesome. Please keep me keep me on the loop of that because I'm really interested. Um, question for you. The protagonist, which is the, I don't want to say is the kids because the person who's like bringing up the best of everybody is the, uh, the teacher, the coach. Mm -hmm. So uh, is he an actual coach or is this just an actor? No, uh, Mr. Glenn Ellison played himself. And Mr. Denver Singletary played himself. They are the real people that run that camp. Wow, that's they amazing. Didn't, they didn't have to learn many lines, trust me. We just kind of <laughs> went with it, you know. <laughs> They've been doing this 24-7. So it's like, you just you just roll. I, right. I'll go into it real quick. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's uh, One thing we learned is that it's not really good to do an outside film in Florida in August. But, uh, we, <laughs> but we did it. Uh, and we worked through it. The, the kids, the actors and actresses, they were wonderful. They just really, of course, we fed them well, but they were really, really appreciative to be a part of that film. No, I mean, wow. I'm Now I'm jealous because I didn't know about this. And I was living in, in uh, Florida and I have my little boy. My little boy, he he's precious. He's my little soldier. But... <laughs> He has his moments in which <laughs> I wish I knew about success camp. <laughs> oh, well, you do now. Just go to parenthood.com. Thank you very much. <laughs> now let's go to question number six. Number six. Question number six says, can you speak to the importance of depicting both the struggles and triumphs of the families at success camp in a way that resonates with viewers on a personal level? I think uh, I th I'm I'm really big proponent of communication, and um, I, I think when we the importance of those those characters that we built for that film, what happens at the end? Well, there again, I don't want to give away the ending, but you can kind of see how we work through the problems that we we have as a family, and and I think when you just kind of um, when I depict about the different different type of characters, you know, everybody's different. You know, God made us all different. We all have different fingerprints, you know. And, and I think when you actually view this film, you'll see a little bit of yourself in something, I think. And and you'll kind of go, wow, maybe I need to change this. Maybe I need, to wait to, I need to change my communication with my child. Maybe I need to weigh my communication with myself. You know, that's, that's important, how you talk yeah, to yourself. Yeah. Um, that's a whole nother issue probably that we could talk about, but I, I believe that if you just kind of, um, think through your situation, regardless, you have one kid, I know, well, Mr. Denver, the, the person playing the, the actual drill sergeant, so to speak, I mean, he has nine children and he practiced all wow. of these, all, all of these, these strategies with his own kids because he believes it. You got to believe it, you know? If you, if you don't believe it, then you really can't teach it, can you? So. Yeah, true. No, something else I want to, I want to piggyback on that. Um, not just communication, but understanding. And the yes. fact that everything starts within, with you first, because there's something about knowing how to deal with your own emotions and your own repertoire so that you can mirror that into your children absolutely you can, just, you can just say well let's sit down and communicate because if you're not willing to listen to understand where they're coming from you're just gonna reply oh no but i know best i know better so you gotta do what i'm telling you to do and sometimes we need to be able to sit down take a deep breath and remember that these are little human beings as well mm -hmm. and that they will have their own path uh to deal with 
and to basically uh, fight, <laughs> fight to get to the top of that mountain. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, there's there's the mountain, but there's the valleys. I mean, we, it's, a, it's an ebb and flow through life, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, that being said, let's go to our question number seven. Question number seven is, how do you envision the film, this film, sparking conversation and discussion among viewers about the role of discipline in shaping children's behavior and character? Well, you know, it's been out over a year now. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, we, we've heard a lot of, there's been a lot of comments and, and, and some people think it's a little bit too harsh sometimes, you know, but, but there again, like I said, I, I've seen the actual success camp work, uh, but it's not as like some of the things we put in the movie. I think that when you, um, I think it could just, d discussions should be for starting home. I think that we could just, we start right there with our own children. And uh, even in with, uh, you know, the, Mr. Glenn has seen it all. Trust me. If, if And I tried to get him on the, on here tonight, but he, he, he had to go to a viewing. But I, I tell you, he, he could tell you he has seen it all. And um, but but when you when he gets down to the point of talking to the parent about just talking with your children. Now, talking is not always the same. I mean, so there's got to be some consequences sometimes when you tell them to clean the room five mm -hmm. times, you know, then it's time to have some consequences, you know, by not cleaning your room. But the thing is, is that you you have to you have to do that in love. You just have to. And um, I mean, <laughs> there is, it is there's a lot of faith. It's a faith based camp. It really is. I mean, there, a lot of prayer goes into helping families because. Mr. Glenn and Ms. Sheila, they, they truly care about family unit. And uh, I, I think the discussions that, that people have is either they think it's too hard, they think they can't do it. You know, the parent says, oh, it's too hard, I can't do it. In fact, I've seen that one time. A parent literally saw the beginning of the camp and literally told her husband, go get my child. <laughs> you know, and they left. Well, wow. you know, three days later, all these other children that stayed and the parents that stayed were having a great time, you know, because at the end, you, you've seen in the movie what happens at the end. It truly happens. We've seen that. So no, I, I believe in an intervention like that. Um, before I moved here to Michigan, I was a behavior therapist and mm -hmm. uh, in behavior therapy, uh, my job was to implement behavior. So uh, it it's really rewarding to see a child coming up with a good behavior that you implemented in them. It's like, wow, it's like, I'm, I'm being not just an addition to this kid's growth, but I'm also being a positive impact in their lives. And that is really rewarding. And I, if that person ever sees this video, you miss that chance, but it's okay. It's not too late. Go ahead and do it again. Him, I promise you it's gonna it's gonna bring forth fruition that's for sure you know there's always uh there always a, there's another chance you know I mean thank God that he gives you more than one chance you know and two chances sometimes 500 chances but sometimes we have to understand that it's not somebody else's fault it's our fault it's we have to look in the mirror and I, I I've worked with dads for 20 years and I tell them, take the mirror test, you know, breathe on that mirror. Are you breathing? Yes. Well, look at the guy in the mirror and talk to him first before you try to tell everybody else that you're right. You know, understand that we all have a mission in life. We all have a something we're supposed to be doing. Right. And um, I, I, I think especially when, when it comes to parenting, you know, I was a divorced dad. My daughter was a year and a half old and it just broke my heart. But because I decided when I walked out of the courtroom, I would never divorce my child. That's why my 40 something year old daughter will call me today and talk with me because we kept that's that communication beautiful. along the way. And that's how our ministry got started. And, uh, you know, between my dad dying and then, and then my daughter uh, or, or her mother and I divorcing. So, but things happen to us, but we have to pick up the pieces and go forward with them. Amen, amen to that. Uh, question, it's parenthelpcenter.com or parents help center? It's the parenthelpcenter.com. Okay, okay. well, let me put it right there for everybody. Is that the right way? 
Yes, I think it's a the the parent help center dot com. Parent help center. Okay, right. let me put that back there. The parent help center dot com. You just put that in a search engine; it'll come up. So, but uh, he's been in business, like I said, for over twenty years. <clears throat> Well, it's right there for everybody to see. And if you're interested in this success camp, go ahead and please check that website and let us know because we need those feedbacks. We need those reviews. <laughs> now, that being said, let's go ahead with our ninth question. Our ninth question is, were there any particular scenes or moments in the film that you believe have the most potential to challenge viewers' perceptions and inspire self-reflection on their attitudes towards parenting and discipline? Hmm. Any particular scenes? Um, I believe one of the scenes that, that touched me, let me just start off with that one. The one of the scenes that touched me the most was when the two brothers sat down in the cemetery and they had a chat about their dad because their dad had died. My dad died when I was 11, as I mentioned. Okay. So I could kind of reflect to that. In fact, I told, uh, Braden Zorbo that recently, I think that was one of the best scenes that I've enjoyed watching, uh, over and over simply because they talk about, <clears throat> they talk about how they miss their dad and how important their dad was to them. Sometimes, Rose, we don't realize that until somebody's gone, just mm -hmm. how important they are. Woo! And uh, I always say that, that that if you, you know, well, my wife reminds me, we, we talk about this from time to time. You never know what you had until it's gone, right? You never know what you missed until it's gone. Unfortunately, so, it takes that but, for some people to understand what they got. Right. Mm -hmm. But that scene right there touched me. Uh, other scenes uh, that, that I've heard, that have touched people is is that the end that there's a hope and i still don't want to give the ending away if you haven't seen the movie but there's a hope at the end of the movie that says that okay i can do this because what you see at the end of the movie is actually what i've seen in my own with my own lives you know when when i've participated in the camps out there um but I think that all the scenes could re resonate with someone there's a lot of goofiness that the kids try with us how many times do our kids try us, right? Um, there, there's a lot of um, attitude, and how many times we have attitudes, you know? Um, there's a lot of um, there, there's there's a serious scene with Ava, you know, why she's at the camp, you know, she's she's kind of lost because her parents are gone, and then, you know, her grandmother's passed, and oh, there I go trying to give her the movie again, but but what she does to herself, you know. Um, I think there's some scenes in there that could touch a lot of people because of the things that we go through in life. But And that's exactly why we're playing it after this interview, because I believe it's not only beneficial for children to watch, but parents primarily. I have a little daughter and um, a little flaw that I have, I, I will accept I have that flaw. Sometimes I'm a little sarcastic and I don't measure the time and place for the sarcasm. So my daughter has picked up on that habit of mine. I'm working on it now because of that. Um, but at some point I was having a little back and forth with my daughter and she just threw a little dagger at me, um, sarcasm. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna let it go. You win this one because yeah, that's my fault, but we're going to sit down and talk about this later. Right now, I'm going to let you have it because touche, <laughs> <laughs> touche, that was a good one. I'm going to let you have it right now, but later let's sit down and talk about when it's appropriate to use that level of sarcasm. Sometimes sarcasm can be used just for games, but not when we're talking about having serious conversations about real issues that are happening in life and things that really affect the the way you're leaving. So let's put games aside and let's communicate like parents and children. So yeah. that being said, let's go to our last questions. I have uh, 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 two more questions, but they're like, they're, they're my questions. Uh, okay. 
let's go with this last question for the panel. And it's looking back on your experience directing Success Camp. What do you hope viewers will take away from the film in terms of reevaluating their approach to parenting and the impact it can have on their children's development? We talk about communication. That's one. Understanding. What else? Well, um, I think, uh, first of all, I, I was co-directing with it, but I, I, I um, wow, that's kind of a big question because I, I think about how the impact that we have as parents, you know, if, if we don't impact our own children, somebody else is going to impact them, right? But we, I think if we just kind of, kind of, um, just kind of look at ourselves again, looking, uh, I, I try to do a lot of self perspective when you look at yourself and you realize that maybe you don't want your kids to do certain things right i think if you if you actually kind of kind of fix some of the own kind of put yourself on the right track and do the right thing sometimes that your kids are going to rub off on you now was it, the second part of that question was was um I, it went away on my right screen there. i'll put it right yeah. there for you mm-hmm it says, sure. looking back on your experience directing Success Camp, what do you hope viewers will take away Nicole, from yeah. the film in terms of reevaluating their approach to parenting and the impact it can have on their children's development? I, I think that if we mess up, we just need to say we messed up. I think you need to apologize. We sometimes both apologies on both sides. Yeah, I think one of the most powerful things I've ever seen was a child uh, hearing from her parent, honey, I'm sorry, I messed up. And because I messed up, I'm asking your forgiveness. I'm going, whoa, that was pretty good. So I think if the parents actually, the perspective I'm, I'm hoping that the parents will evaluate is to say, okay, where am I messing up? Where can I ch make a change? Where can I do some things different to help? And, and I think your kid's pers perspective of that, I mean, my dad wasn't around. And I messed up with my mom and I'm like, I feel bad about messing up with my mom because she's trying to, she's working two jobs trying to keep ends meet, right? So I was trying to reevaluate myself. Sometimes I messed up and, uh, and I have to apologize to my mom. Well, she would say something like, I'm sorry, I'm doing my best. Well, I, that's, that's coming from a widow. She never wanted to remarry again, right? So she was trying to do her best to raise a son and my other two brothers, which were older, but trying to raise me in a way that she knew was best for her and for me at that time, because she was trying to do both roles, and that's difficult. Wow. And I, I think if, 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 if in reevaluating ourselves as a parent, reevaluating ourselves as a person, I think is going to help you and your child have a better future. I truly do, because I've seen it in law enforcement, I've seen it. I had over 3,000 counseling sessions with kids and parents in my tenure at a school. I was at a high school for, for many, many years, over a decade. So I could tell you that communication is the key, Rose. It truly is. Because no matter what, they're still your child and you're still their parent. I don't care how many arguments you have, how many apologies you have to make, you're still each other's family member and that's not going to change that part yes correct like um i tell my friends uh parents parents that are friends of mine um i would tell them you know it's very important the time that you spend with these children um because they will grow up and they will rub it on your face so make sure you're doing right by them and vice versa but you gotta earn that trust you gotta earn right. that respect because kids, again, they're still human beings. Uh, although they came out of you or, or or you made them, it don't matter. They still their own individual, their own universe inside themselves. So it's it's something about earning the respect of someone that could easily just hate you and leave because you did the wrong thing. But there's a bond that will always bring them back to try to fix it. And that it's so beautiful, especially uh, you're talking about your mom. Your mom is a warrior. Uh, God bless her. And wow, uh, it's beautiful. I, I, I'm listening to you and I hope I can meet her one day. That That's wow. a beautiful story that you just shared with us right there. So look like a look. 
a mother, a mother that maybe she wasn't there all the time because she had two jobs and she had all these other sacrifices that she needed to take on to be able to provide for you. And you as a kid maybe wasn't able to see all of the efforts that she was putting in because, you know, as kids, we're just playing around, worrying about our own things. We're not even worrying about bills, about gas, about uh, what are we doing? What are we gonna do this weekend? What are we? We're just thinking about. Okay, when are we going to the park? When are we getting ice cream? When are we going to this? When when are you getting me this that you told me you was gonna get me last month? But it's been two months now. Uh, uh, tomorrow is gonna be two months, and I still don't get it. And you know, you just start thinking as a child. Well, maybe my parents don't love me enough, and that's mm -hmm. why they don't get me the stuff I need. And I feel that some parents fail on sitting down and explaining this stuff. Some parents tell me, um, well, they are not mature enough to understand these concepts. Like, you are the parent. Sit down right. and teach them because That's they right. need that. They need that reassurance. Just like we have love languages. Some people have physical touch as a love language. Some others have a words of uh words of affirmation. Some others have act of services. The words of affirmation part, um, I just realized my daughter has it. And she enjoys when I encourage her, when I tell her, um, oh my gosh, you're doing amazing. Like, I'm really proud of you. You're doing this without even, without my help. Like that's, that's really grand of you. And she's like, really? You think so? Oh, thank you, mom. And she hugs me and kisses me. Oh, and it fulfills my whole soul. Like everything is complete when I get that. And I notice, wow, you know, sometimes I hug her or kiss her or I'm around her and she don't like that. But the words, it matters what comes out of our mouth. So parents, patience, a lot of patience through communication, but patience is very important because our kids are not always going to do what we want them to do. Sometimes they'll just do whatever they want to do and it's not going to sit right with us. So That's when true. that happens, take a deep breath and remember, let's sit down, let's talk this through because you're a human being just like me and I made a lot of mistakes. I am That's not true. a saint. So I completely agree with the fact that you are, you are, how do you say that word? Um, you are, you are granted to make mistakes. That's how you learn. That's how we learn. That's how we find out, okay, this did not work out. Let me just try it again in another way. So that being said, uh, again, God bless your mom. That's amazing. Um, well, and I, um, I, I lost my mom in, in 2012. Uh, but, uh, we, you know, I was right with her the whole time. She was there with me when dad died and I was there with her when she passed. And, um, but you know, I'd like to piggyback on something you said, you were talking about ice cream and all that, you know, sometimes when I talk to parents and, and, and the child will say, oh, they promised me this, they promised me that and they don't. Well, one of the things that I remember in our school as a police officer in the school was this. A guy went for a kid went for a three three pointer shot in basketball, and I I told him afterwards I said, man, that was a great shot. You did great. He said, yeah, it'd have been better if my dad had been there. He always promises to come, but he never shows up. So if we can put things on our calendar, if we can write, okay, I'm going golfing or I'm going fishing or whatever, or we tell our children that I'm going to take you shopping or I'm going to take you fishing or I'm going to take you to the theme park or whatever, and we always back out of that, what do they remember, Rose? They remember. Uh, it probably won't happen, you know. I'm sorry, guys. We're live. I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. You don't know how important it is to show up. Oh, my gosh. You don't yeah. even have to do a whole woo or cheerleading. Yeah. Showing up. The fact that they're doing their thing and they look up and you're there. That's right. That's wow. right. Or, or we promise them we're going to do something and we don't do it, you know. That's what they remember. So we got to get out of that habit. I, we got a reminder. Remember I told you I said I'm going to set a reminder. Well, I set a reminder because I have to have reminders. Well, you could put your kids in the reminders, you know, and say, oh, okay, I got a belt ball game here. Or I mean, our children, our, our daughter and her husband, they have three children and they're always going somewhere. But if they don't put it in their phone to remind them, they might forget, you know. So uh, I think that if we teach our kids how to help others, too, it's going to be very important. And uh, we helped each other on that film set. 
we were helping each other. The kids were helping each other. They were they were enjoying meeting new friends. I mean, you know, I, I coined a phrase years ago, over a decade ago, that if you go through life helping only yourself, you'll go through life alone. And and there's too many lonely people in the world. We have to really look out for each other and take care of each other because the world's not getting any any nicer. We have to be the nicer ones, right? So yep, that we got and we to do that. And, and we can do that in film, Rose. We can really make a difference on a film set just by being there and helping each other. I'm sorry, I'm getting off on track. So no, 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 you're not. Like we are in the same in the same frequency. Oh, that's, okay. what I think. that's what I believe, and that's what I tell every filmmaker I am uh, I work with. I say like you know, there's some people that make movies just to make movies. And just for yeah. the sake of entertainment and to make money, of course, to pay the bills. But I sat down to think about the impact that the film can cause in our subconscious and right. how important it is to deliver really nice messages that can shape the future for the new generations to come. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I completely agree with what you're saying right now. And mm -hmm. so kudos thank you very 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 oh, much. well thank you none of this was scripted by the way folks i mean <laughs> other than the better questions not. So, <laughs> it better not <laughs> other than the other than the questions which i never know what she's gonna say right so but. <laughs> yeah i try to do it this way because i don't want people to feel like uh like we rehearsed this before no. i really want uh people to know that these questions are genuine that i paid attention to the to the material and I have really good questions because I care about the product. So that being said, um, I have my own questions, if, if you're okay with that. Sure. Um, I have one question. So we talk about the film and the story of the film and the impact of the film. Let's talk a little bit about you. Tell me about your story as a filmmaker. How did you break into the film industry? Well, thank you, Rose. That, uh, that wasn't scripted either. I. Uh... I, like I said, I did the, the dad's uh, organization. I started it 20 years ago. It's called Dads for Life. And uh, we, we actually, uh, I started doing some, I wanted to do film one day. I wanted to do commercials. We did three, we did three commercials last year when I started an organization within our organization called Studio 425 Productions. And Studio 425 has a little backstory too. But anyway, so Studio 425 Productions started, we did the three commercials. And now I, I created this little inner circle of just great people. We're in a, they're just wonderful people. They're actors, they're actresses, they're, they're, they're work behind the scenes or camera people. And uh, so I started writing a script and we're getting ready to do, uh, we hope to do in the fall. Of course, it's always about fundraising. And uh, where we're going to talk about the crossroads. And the crossroads is, is basically people's stories and how you come up to a crossroad. What do you do with it? Do you go left, right, or whatever? And I think you and I are going to talk about that later as I get closer to that. But that's how I got into filmmaking, by doing this film and being involved with, with this project of Success Camp. I really said, well, you know what? You can really, filmmakers can really tell a story, you know? And uh, it doesn't always have to have colorful language in it. And you can tell good stories sometimes, you know. So I think that I, that's how I got started with that. And, of course, with my organization, because my dad dying to being a young divorced dad, that's how I got that started 20 years ago. And I just coach dads. I work with dads to try to help in single dads and, and dads that are, don't know what to do and, and that kind of thing. So it just all came together with me and wanting to do film as well. And of course I'm an actor too. So I've, I've been in a lot of projects, so. <clears throat> well, talk to, me a little bit, uh, talk to me a little bit about those projects, at least one of them. Tell me, tell me about it so I can shake it out well, later. Well, recently um, uh, Camp Hideout came out and Camp Hideout was put on by uh, Called Hire Studios and uh, had uh, several actors that people may know in there, but Christopher Lloyd was one of them uh, from Back to the Future. Uh, and I played a policeman in that one. Uh, I played a fireman in one that's coming out. Actually, it's starting to stream, or not stream, but it's actually doing premieres now. I'm going to premiere here in North Florida um, later in May, but it's called Fighting the Fire, and I played a fire chief in that one. So uh, those are a couple projects that I did I was pretty pleased with, and that was those were after success camp. Oh, awesome. Well, um, uh, 
please keep me on the loop of that one because uh, I I'm guessing if it's still premiering, I won't be able to find it around just yet, right? Not just yet, not just yet. Not but I'm yet. I'm sure the producer of Fighting the Fire would definitely be yeah. wanting to talk to you. So. <laughs> But oh it, right i'm still set to talk to glenn that's true oh yeah that's right yeah. him soon so don't worry yeah. about that now another question um my own question over here uh when it comes to your career as a filmmaker what is something that makes you feel passionate the uh the thing that makes you feel passionate the most in the film in your career in your own journey about okay as you say when i premiered that or no 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 in general your filmmaking career what is something that makes you passionate about it the truth is is people just being honest with each other and i had some people that were around me that were just truly honest with me i um people that care about other people that's what really makes me passionate and then and telling true good stories that's why i wanted to, to why this crossroads is being built it's because we're telling people stories you know uh there's a lot of stories out there people have and uh but i think just today the world just needs honesty rose there's mm -hmm. so many people that will lead you astray there's so many scams out there people even in the film business you got to be careful because I just like true honesty. That's how my studio got started because my grandfather uh, lived at a 425 address and I call it Studio 425 because when I spoke to him on his porch, he would talk about honest things and talk about treating people right, talking about integrity. They don't care to what side of the political side you're on, but mm -hmm. just being the honest person that God's called you to be because there's too many people out there that aren't honest, aren't honest anymore. So, I don't know, just being around good people. That's what makes me, that's what I'm passionate about, being good, around good people. And uh, people that aren't there for, to, about themselves, they're about other people, you know? So, anyway, I can go on about that stuff, sorry. <laughs> no, no, listen, I'm enjoying this conversation. You ask. <laughs> Another, something that my, my parents, I think it was my dad told me at some point, there's people that are here for a good time, and then there's others that are here for the long run. Those that are there for a good time bring lessons with them. That's they bring true. a lot of lessons. Those that That's are true. there for the long run are people that are going to be your biggest supporters. And those are not always, uh, he told me this is the most important thing. Those are not always going to agree with you in everything that you think because real friends hold you accountable. And I was That's like, true. wow. Okay, and um, uh, uh, piggybacking on that thread of thought, I was talking to my daughter a few days ago, and she was like, well, um, I have my friends, and my friends are just like me, and ta da 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 And I was like, well, I'm actually happy that you have friends that aren't just like you, but uh, do you want to be better? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not no throwing shade on your friends or anything. I'm pretty sure your friends are really cool kids. But you know, when you are in an environment and you're not learning anything from them, I think it's time to get a new circle because mm -hmm. you want to surround yourself with people that can push you further up on that mountain. That's right. So talking yeah. about that, oh, go ahead. When I talked to kids, you know, even when the internet started coming out and, you know, there was all these apps coming out and I saw the kids, I said, listen, there's, there's more than a friendship than a like or, or a uh, click on a button, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to get, get somebody to be a friend on, on Facebook or wherever. There's more to friendship than that, but that takes time to, um, to nurture. You know, it's like looking for gold, right? So you're going to dig for gold and you're going to find, I mean, or a diamond, you know, sometimes you're going to have a, a it's going to look like a rough piece of coal, but if you shine it up, shine it up over years, your friendship shines up and you wind up with a diamond type of friendship. Um, I mean, I've had some friends die recently and it just, you know, you, you miss them. They're gone. Right. So yeah. but those, those friends, it wasn't just an acquaintance. They were some dear friends that we did stuff together and laughed together and cried together and that kind of thing. So, uh, if we teach our kids that, I think be very important, not not to just 
think about yourself all the time and not to not to just think that a friend is somebody you just got on Facebook. You know, I mean, there's <laughs> some deep friendships are really important in your life. That's right. And that being said, um, let's go to our artistic advice segment right here. I want you to tell us a little bit of uh, some advices that you may have for those filmmakers that are trying to make it in the industry or trying to make something grand, like a, a great story like Success Camp. What would you tell those filmmakers that are working their way up? I'd say, first of all, know what you're writing. You know, don't just be writing stuff that, that just you think people want to hear. Know in your heart that you want to you want to write it. First of all, I knew when we when I saw the final script of Success Camp, and we had some struggles with it in building it. We really did, you know, trying to make it all work. I'm having struggles in the one I'm writing now, simply because you don't you don't just rush through it. I think don't rush through it is important. I think finding some people around you that you really trust and really care to talk to. You know, we shouldn't tell our dream to everybody, right? Because not everybody's going to want to see you succeed at that dream. That but is people that people that you could trust that that you get them around you, and do a little test pilot, you know, in the way of reading it with, um, you know, with some people you trust and see how does it flow. But one thing is just don't give up on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I would love to film this crossroad project next week, but I don't have the money yet. I'm not going in debt for it. I'm making sure that that it flows when it's supposed to flow because I've got the people that I can call to get with me on the set, but I want to make sure that everybody gets paid like they get promised to get paid. Talking so, about that, do you have the synopsis and, and the draft and everything with you? I do. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about that later on after this interview. Okay. Okay. So moving forward, yes. <laughs> right here, we have, uh, we have free speech, but not here. Here we have free art speech. So you have the floor and the panel to talk about whatever you want to talk when it comes to the art we love the most. You know, Rose, I've never seen your show. I didn't know anything about you until recently. We started discussing this possible uh, interview here, but I really like the flow that you're doing. You know, when you talk about free art speech, I've never heard that part way there, but, but think about this. You have, you have a film, you have a film in your mind, right? You put it down on paper, you get on the set, everybody knows their job, what they're supposed to do, and then all of a sudden you see it on TV, like I saw Success Camp earlier. And then when I hear that first voice, you know, in the courtroom, knowing it's me, you know, you kind of see that things have a flow, an ebb and flow to them. And I think if you just, if you have a project that you're working on and you know it's going to work and you're going to <clears throat> you know you've got the money to get it done and everything don't over promise people you know what i did something on the set and just just to tell you i did these three commercials i told you about right last year for our organization and they're on my website you can watch them but those three commercials you know what i did the night before is everybody that was an actor or an actress or involved in it i sat there and i i took a thank you card And I personally, with my pen, wrote out, I didn't do it on the computer, wrote out a thank you card. And I put the little bit of honorarium in there that they didn't even know they were getting. But I knew they had Why to get it. Off there? Uh, that, that is really grand. I'm going to tell you something about that. Um, uh, uh, real estate, we were trying to get a house over here. And something that really stood out of our uh, real estate agent was that when she gave us that thank you that thank you card and like hey i hope you guys enjoy the house and stuff like that she did it by hand and normally we're used to get that computerized so when she did it by hand i was like oh this is beautiful she actually took time to sit down and actually write this for us this is oh you know that little that warm feeling that they actually care so i'm thank you for doing that because i'm pretty sure it sparked the same feeling in them Well, I, I did 15 of them that night. My hand was hurting, okay? And my wallet was a little lighter too. But the thing is, is that I those people, they didn't expect anything. They were doing it for me for free. 
And but I knew in my heart that I had a little budget I wanted to do that for them. And that in itself was just spoke volumes to them. I'm nothing big, I'm nothing great, you know, but the thing is, is that it spoke volumes to them. There again, you're talking about people. You treat people the way that you want to be treated, right? And things should turn out all right. That is right. Is there anything else that you would like to add to your free art speech? Um, just go out and film. Just do it. You and know? not just that, not just that. Let me stop you there because you talk about the crossroads. Uh, is there any Kickstarter, any GoFundMe that you have so that people can go and, you know, inform themselves more about this new series you're creating so that they there, can? There is. I, I started a little Gifts in Go uh, project. Um, I, I didn't go with the other one, but I went with Gifts in Go. And uh, I have a project there called The Crossroads. You know, people can find it there if they want to help out with that. So, but I, I'm just a patient man. You know, I just wait and see what happens with it down the road. Because I'm, I, at my age, trust me, I've learned to be patient. Okay. We won't tell you how old that is, but. <laughs> no, I, I, that's, the, that's the most beautiful virtue. I'm telling you, patience, because we yeah. need it especially in this time and place that we live in. <laughs> well, that's absolutely right, Rose. But I have certainly enjoyed being with you tonight and your guest and your uh, likewise, audience. So. Likewise, it's been an honor, Keith. So that being said, we have culminated this interview. Um, guys, don't leave. We are not done yet. I am playing success cam for you guys to watch. If you have your kids around, sit, sit them down next to you if they're not already asleep of course because it's cool tomorrow <laughs> it's, it's not a long feature film but uh but watch out for that bailiff he's kind of mean so <laughs> no listen y'all y'all are going to enjoy this film so that being said thank you very much for tuning in keith thank i'll you. let it i'll let it go with you so that you can say goodbye to everyone all right well thank you everyone i appreciate uh you being with us tonight And uh, I'm just happy to be part of your party tonight. This has been fun. This has really been fun, Rose. I appreciate you. Yeah, thankfully I put music here. Well, I was like, I would, I should have put something more upbeat so we could like dance at the end. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Keith. Have a beautiful evening, and I'll see you around. All right. Thank you. I may watch Success Camp. <laughs> I, I, you're still gonna be here if, if you if you stay around. We're watching it together, Dan, because I'm not moving anywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's get to that, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Let's watch Success Camp in Press Play Cinema. Okay, guys, let's get to it right here. Let me disconnect my camera so that you guys don't. session the honorable judge connors is presiding you may now be seated okay let's get started um michael adams come on up son mr adams you've you've been here before i don't know you don't know 
you've been charged with speeding and reckless driving. How do you plead? I don't know. You don't know. It was fun. Fun. You could have gotten killed. You might have hurt someone else. Yeah, but I didn't, so... You didn't. No, you didn't. Are you pleading guilty or not guilty? I plead no contest. No contest. All right. Do you know what that means? It means you'll accept the conviction without admission of guilt. Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Okay, are we, are we keeping you from something, Mr. Adams? No, just do what you gotta do. Okay, I'll do what I gotta do. I find you guilty, and I'm revoking your driver's license until you're 18 years old. Wait, ser no, 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 seriously? Seriously. I, I thought I was just gonna get like a fine or something. Mom, he can't do that. I've gotta do my thing. This. You gotta do your thing. Well, you're gonna do your thing without your driver's license. Uh, Reuben Baker. You're dismissed, Mr. Adams. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Adams. Come back here and pick that up. Might be easier if you pulled your pants up. No, it's all good. No, it's, it's not good. It's not all good at all. You can't come here in my courtroom dressed like that. It's disrespectful. Do you understand that, son? Happy? Are you the mother, ma'am? I am. And I assume that's his brother? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, okay. You want to explain to me what's going on here? Your Honor, I don't even know where to begin. This has been going on for about a year now. Their father died in a motorcycle wreck. And I'm terrified the same thing's going to happen to him. I'm sorry for your loss. Mr. Adams, it seems like you have a very good mom here. She seems to be very loving and caring and worried about you. I think you could both use a little bit of help. I will consider dropping the charges and reinstating your license if you and your brother attend a very special camp for a weekend. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. You, you agree as well? Okay. Fine. Now, Mom, you're going to have to go as well. Okay. Call Mr. Glenn. Okay, he'll, uh, he'll get you straight. Good luck. Okay. Could you stop touching my hair? What? The party tonight. Ethan, his house, his college friends will be there. He invited us all. Is his brother gonna be there? I don't know, I'm not a mind reader. Hey Kate, can I go? Um, no. And do you wanna know why you can't go? Because we don't want you there. We don't even want you here. And stop eavesdropping on my conversations. What are you looking at? How was school today? Hey, yo, what you doing? We got a phone call that said that you were suspended. Man, look, it was nothing. All we did was just play the practical joke. That's all it was. Don't be making a, a joke can turn it. into something that serious. Bruh. Don't you ever call me bro. I'm your father. 
Oh, so now you my dad? But you only come around once a month like the pool boy? Don't you ever talk to me like that. Or what? Guys, can we just calm down, please? Man, no, man, because you always um, defending him no, to go inside, no. but you know hey, he's wrong. Hey, hold it. What is the problem? Why do you keep getting in trouble causing problems no, in school? I man? don't get in trouble. You just don't ever listen. That's your problem. And then you want to turn around and blame it on me. Jaden, baby, we don't always blame it on yeah, you. Yeah, okay, yeah, you would say that. We just want to hear your side of the story. No! I don't want to hear nothing. Go to your room. Man, what? You're grounded. Whatever, man. Question, would you build a website for a major brand with more than 200 million users using Wix? Actually cutting yourself? No! Get out! Look, I don't know what to do for you. Get out! Leave me alone! Or get me out of dead grandma's room! I'm on that! Oh, Ava. What is this? Oh, Ava, good grief! Oh, yeah. Hey, Judge, can you sign this release? Yeah, come on. You see that kid today? He almost fell over. I mean, what's with, what's with this sagging pants? I don't get it. That's the thing today, Judge, I guess. It's stupid. That, uh, that camp, that uh, card you had me give to the mom, what, what's that all about? Uh, that's a success camp. Uh, a friend of mine runs it. It's a take problem kids, attitude adjustments. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a great program. And the mom? Yeah, well, so half of the program is designed for the parents. You can't just fix the kid. You need to kind of approach it holistically. The other half is the, is the, is the parent. I mean, it's about the home. So it uh, gives these problem kids a second chance. It's a, it's a really effective program. Okay. Thank you, sir. Everything okay, Jim? Yes, sir. Uh, success camp. Thanks. That's it. So, um, how was your day today? Hi, Mom. Bye. Whoa. What are you wearing? Clothes. Clothes? Yeah. yeah. You're not wearing enough clothes. That's the problem. There's not enough clothes there. What, David? She looks fine. Where are you going? You look like you're going to an interview at a strip club. To a party with my friends. You're not going like that. Seriously? You know what? You know what? Yeah. Just how about go get those jeans? You know those white ones? No. But well, look at her. Terrible. Look what she's wearing. You're impossible. You're not going. You can go to your room. Why? What? Like this. And because you know, that's you it. can stay in your Great room job. for another week Great until job. you learn Great to respect the job. family here. Respect the family? Speaking you want to talk about family. respect the family? 
Yeah. Go to work. You know what you I don't cook, tell? I clean. Why don't you try being her mother everything. for once? You don't have any friends. Don't be her friend. Be her mother. Give me an hour, okay? But Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan will be there? I'm on the way right now. One hour. I can go talk to her. No, thanks. Well, other than cutting, what else is she doing? Huh. Oh boy, where do I begin? She's skipping school. I take her to the school bus stop. She demands I leave, right? And I find out that she doesn't even get on the school bus. I had a truant officer show up at the house yesterday. And you know what? I think she's shoplifting too. I saw bags of clothing in their bedroom with tags on them still. I don't know what to do. Kids are so different today. Did we act like this when we were young? Well, if we had, Dad would have kicked our butts. Today, kids have so many things influencing them. Maybe there is an outside source. Today, in court, Judge Connors sent two boys and her mom to a camp it's called um, Success Camp. It's out on the north side somewhere, um, out by the jail, but it's not in the jail. It's behind the jail. Okay. Um, let me see here. There it is. Success Camp. Maybe that can help you. Most people have no clue that in 2023, the best way to make money on Amazon is not Get there! Get there now! Down! 
down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Is anything funny over there? Everybody down, get there, everybody. Get there. Now you just stand there. Lay up all you want in that position. Will everybody up when I have complete silence? Is that clear? The answer is yes, sir. Is yes, that sir. clear? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Down. Up. Down. Up. On your feet. Get back in line. Listen up, Gappers. From this point on, your parents do not exist. Yes, they're here with you, but you do not look at them. You better not be giving them the stink eye. I'll be watching you. Am I clear? Yes, yes sir. I can hear you. Yes, sir. Turn to your right. In a single file line, starting with you, move. Hello, my name is Mr. Glenn. You've already met Mr. Denver. He's the nice one. I've been doing this for 21 years, trying to help young people realize that for every decision in life, there are consequences, good and bad. Our job this weekend is to help you understand how to be successful. That's why we call this camp Success Camp. We believe you are good kids making bad choices. But those bad choices can put you right across that fence in a heartbeat. That's a prison. That's where bad people go, and you're not bad yet, but you're headed there. Disobeying parents, not listening to anybody, not doing anything you're told to do will put you there. I know what I'm talking about because I've talked to many inmates, many and they wish they were sitting where you are. They wish somebody had told them what we're going to show you this weekend. Absolutely. You're going to be simulating juvie, being locked up, not being with your parents, not being able to talk to your parents, experiencing what it is to not appreciate somebody who loves you with all their heart, but you're breaking their heart. So we've already asked your parents to give us some behaviors that they're dealing with at home. Mr. Denver, you ready with the charges? Yes, sir, Mr. Glenn. Front and center. As I call your name, I want you to stand up. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Very well. Kate St. James. It says here that you've been disrespectful. You've been mean to classmates. Ungrateful. Disrespecting authority. Dressing skimpy. Talking back. Do you love being at home? Answer me. All this is true. You're guilty. Sit down. Michael Adams. Stand up. I don't like your attitude, son. It says here that you've been disrespectful. Hitting your mother. I don't like boys who hit their mother. That's ridiculous. You better never do it again, is that clear? Yes, sir. Reckless driving, laziness, wild and dangerous behavior. So all this is true. You're guilty, sit down. Jaden Matthews. Lazy, sorry attitude. It says that you've been disrespectful. Fighting with your father. Ungrateful. Talking back. So you want to be a low on the street, son? Answer me. Answer me. Speak up. No. So all this is true, though. Are you telling me your parents lying? 
You're guilty, sit down. Noah Jackson said you've been lazy. You're guilty, sit down. Albert Chin, disrespecting authority. You're guilty, sit down. Madison Bomber. Lying and manipulation. You're guilty. Sit down. Ava Riley, stand up quickly. Says that you've been disrespectful. I don't like your attitude either. What's that on your face? You really got a bad attitude, don't you? You're going to be real strong this weekend. I can guarantee you that. Self cutting. You're guilty. Sit down. Goes at him. And here, you've been disrespecting your mother, showing laziness and ungratefulness. All this is true. I can't hear you. Speak up. Yes, sir. You're guilty. Sit down. Well, these are You'll be sent to one weekend at Juvenile Detention Center. You'll be treated just like juvenile delinquents. You will eat jail food, wear jail uniforms, and work just like inmates. Your scheduled release will be Sunday afternoon. Am I clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Very well. Mr. Glenn. Young people, this is the only camp in the world. The only camp in the world that moms and dads come with their kids to camp. Can I tell you why? I'm going to be working more with them than I am with you. Oh, we're going to work with you this weekend, but I'm going to help your parents love you more, respect you more, trust you more. And by the way, I think you're going to like your parents when I get finished this weekend. I'm the only one that wears this kid. Now you listen to me well, young people. Look at me! You want out Sunday? And I know you do. Give me what I want, and you get out. Don't give me what I want, and you won't go home! Am I clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Am I clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Campers on your feet and a single file line. Move. Look at me real good, parents. Number one, I'm a man of faith. I know exactly how you feel. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's coming next. That's to my advantage. Listen to me. Everything we've done since the moment you drove on this property was all a show. None of it will change behavior long term. Oh, screaming and yelling made for a little while. I tried that myself. And Sunday morning, I'm going to tell you what a bad parent looks like, Mr. Glenn. Guys, these kids you have today are good kids making bad choices, right? I don't work with bad kids, and I definitely don't work with bad parents. What do you mean, Mr. Glenn? Well, bad parents would never come to me in the first place. I know you're a good parent. You just don't know how to parent the kids you got. Let me ask you a question. You want me to lie to you this weekend? Oh, I could, but I won't. I will tell you the truth whether you like it or not. So help me God. This is not Burger King. You cannot have it your way. Now, straighten up your line. You should be shoulder to shoulder. Everyone here must wear a jump suit. 
Put your sleeping bags on the ground. Take your shoes off and put your jump suits on. Get there. Quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Make it happen. Move it. Put your shoes back on. Quickly, move. When you're done, pick your sleeping bag up. You go over here. You go to that tent. You go over here. Camper, you. Right here. Go over here. So, tough guy. You want to sleep in the tent? Well, have it your way. You can sleep under the star. Grab your sleeping bag and put it right there. Get there! Get in your sleeping bag! Make sure you stay in this area so you don't get bit by the snake. Am I clear? Yes, sir. This sucks. Not here, mister. Seriously? Team, I want to thank you for your hard work tonight, your dedication to saving our families. I really do appreciate that. Father, these are your children. We thank you for these young people that are here. May your will be done over their lives. Protect them and give them a good night's rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All the fat guys on the bottom, skinny ones on the top, be safe getting up. He says bunkhouse. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what, like a military bunker or, uh, but yeah, it's bunk beds. Yeah. Really nice. Bunkhouse. This is it. Yeah, let me get your stuff right. Hey, hey, that's Mark Matthews over there. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you Mark Matthews. Pittsburgh Steelers. Man, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe you're here. What, do you got a messed up kid too? This is something else. I can't believe you're here. I remember you. You're the one who turned me into a Steelers fan. You know, where I come from, everyone's either like the Jets or the Giants. But me, I'm a Steelers fan. You know why? Because of you. I remember the first time I saw you. I think it was Dallas. You scored like the first three touchdowns. You just nobody could touch you. Nobody could touch you. Take this bunk right in here. So my friends, I'm bunker. Mark Matthews said I still don't have any reception. I can't believe this, man. Bunker with Mark Matthews. I told the guys that. Explain it to me. Bunking with Mark Matthews. What does that mean? We went to a camp or something together? You're just something else, man. You are just... I can't believe I'm bunking here with, with Mark Matthews. Oh, Campers on your feet! Let's go, campers! On your feet! And in front of your tent! Move it, move it, move it! Go, go, go! 
straight. Make the jump to. Captain's on the back row. Pull in up front. Boom. Move forward. Come here, son. Stand up. Come this way. Walk this way. You want some of this? Be quiet. Son, you see that fence? I want you to run to that fence. On the other side of it is a prison. And when you get to the fence, I want you to turn around and I want you to yell, I don't want to go to prison. Is that clear? But do I have to? Go! Move! Run! Show me! Yell, I don't want to go, want to, go to prison! Stand I don't want to go to prison! I don't want to go to prison! Well, good morning. I know you probably think you had a nightmare last night, but we know what we're doing. We've got a plan. I want you to understand not every family is the same and some parents is not going to like what we do and that's okay. But the ones who do like what we do, we are very successful with. I promise you just listen to us and stay off that phone. I promise you, you'll learn something. I got some bad news and I got some worse news. Which one do you want first? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to get the bad. The bad news is what we did this weekend will not change your kid at all. It may temporarily, but not long lasting. The worst is, listen to this, I don't lie, it's going to get worse before it gets better. You're getting ready to go into a war. And I mean a stinking war. In America, now there are 48,000 teens who are incarcerated for decision making. That number keeps rising because you guys don't understand the value of what you have. And if you knew what you had to lose, you would make better decisions. We have our young people here, the Department of Corrections, who are all teenage offenders, just like you could be. They're here to talk to you about some of their choices that they made and how it affected them for the rest of their life. We have Moses, Eugene, Lily, and Don. Who are our shoplifters here? Come on, raise your hand. Don't be shy. Who's our shoplifters? Who's our shoplifters? Raise your hand, Ava. Donna? You don't talk to our young people? I was 17, the age of some of y'all here right now. 
I stole shoes from Walmart. It was, it had nothing to do about the shoes. I just wanted to see if I could get away with it. The thrill of it all. Then I got caught and took the police on a police chase, which landed me in here for five years. Being in jail for five years during the best years of your life is horrible. Do you guys even have any idea what that means? No college, no boyfriends, nothing. And what's even worse is that I have a mom. She was so disappointed when she heard about this. And now she has cancer and I just don't know if I'm ever gonna see her again. I would give anything to have that short time back. You see that? That's what bad choices get you. Most of you all don't even think when you're getting ready to do something. You don't think. How many of you all decided that you were going to do something? And when it didn't work out, you made the statement, what was I thinking? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. All of you have done it. What was I thinking? You need to think about your choices and the decision that you're going to make. How many pranksters do we have out there? Come on, pranksters, raise your hand. Moses, come up and tell us a funny story. You heard? Let's go. Who doesn't like a good joke, right? Class clown, that was me. I never took life seriously. Heck, my old man never took me at all. But I knew how to make people laugh. So I called in a bomb threat to my school. And now, I'm here for another two years. Think about that, young people. Think about that for a minute. Every time you make a decision, it's going to have an effect on you and someone else. Poor choices will get you locked up or dead. What about our bullies? Come on, bullies! Raise them up! Being a big bully don't cost you everything. Lily, why don't you talk to us about being a bully, a cute bully. I was a pretty girl. Sure you didn't know. I know some pretty girls up in here. We went into the water. She just wanted to hang out. I didn't know. I didn't know. I pushed her in the water and she hit her head. She drowned. And she died that day. And now, I'm in here for 20 years. 20 years of my life. So if you wanna bully people, stop that evil stuff. Stop. Hmm. You hear that? That is the most amazing thing. You don't even mean to do it. Because you weren't thinking, you did it. That's what she did. She wasn't thinking about the fact that this girl could have bumped her head 
and lost her life when the prank she was pulling. Pranksters take note. Take very good note. And then we have Eugene, who likes to ride fast. Oh yeah, reckless. Just total recklessness. You understand that, don't you, son? I'm talking to you. Raise your hand. Exactly. Eugene, talk to him. I'm Eugene, and um, I'm serving 25 years for manslaughter. I killed my girlfriend. And how did you kill your girlfriend? Racing. There you have it. There you have it. Poor decision making. Thank you, Eugene. So all weekend, we've been talking to you about good decisions, bad decisions. Doesn't matter. When you make a decision, it needs to be well informed. In other words, you need to think about what you're doing. Think about the effects it can have on your life and other people's lives around you. When he got in that car, he did not realize that the speed he was driving and the route he was taking and the accident that he would have would take his girlfriend's life. But these are choices that you make. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Absolutely. Well, hello, David. That's a nice phone you got there. Yeah, it sure is. It's a brand new Galaxy. You I just got I, it. You mind if I hold it? Yeah, go ahead. Check it out. The rules are no phones at this camp. I'll hold it for you till you finish. I'll give it back. Right. You always say it. Try something new. I don't We're trying this now. I so don't now. understand why you brought us we here. We have to trust the this process. This is stupid. My son is not a criminal. Let's just see what happens, okay? This might be the best thing to happen for all of us. I'm going to do this. Please, just trust me. Trust this. Healthcare is the last thing you want to worry about. Joe Biden gets it. He's working to lower healthcare costs. Donald Trump wants to repeat. Let go of me, Alexis. Mark, really? You can't fix that. Listen, baby, my heart is hurting too. But can we fix us? And you fix you? You can't. Calm down. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be just fine, son. Just calm down. Calm down, son. It's gonna be okay. All right. Listen up. This is our first duty service project. So all your efforts out here are not futile. You're doing the city of Jacksonville Bay. We've adopted the highway from this point on down to the cemetery. So this project, parents, you're gonna walk behind the children. All you're gonna do is let them pick up paper. Children, all you have to do is pick up the paper and put the trash in the bag. Parents, you walk behind the kids. Parents, you're going to stay silent as you would at home. You're not going to argue with the child. They either do the task or they don't do the task. Are we clear? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Do not line up behind your child. Walk it down. Hi. 
I met his grandfather. Yeah. Yeah, he's not that bad. You live with him? Yeah. I wonder what's gonna be for lunch. I'm starving. Probably rope. No talking. You guys are pushing my patience. I've got a big surprise for you. Your parents are coming over. So finish your breakfast and let's get this place cleaned up. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait here. Wait. So how you like that last place, my boy? Mm-hmm. You know, was it like fourth, or fifth? Oh, it was no, I last. think it was a little oh, bit. Fine. I thought yeah. it would feel marvelous mm -hmm. knowing that you you're so used to coming in last. Yeah. <laughs> probably close to that, probably close to that. I mean if there were that many teams, we'd probably get that place, you know? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Hey Bob, you look so much better without all that makeup on. Whoa. Oh my god, oh. I just noticed oh, look dude, good. Dude, it's not emo anymore. Eventually. What the heck? <laughs> dude, I didn't even notice. Yeah, that's I don't crazy. Know why. Oh, guys. Okay. So I saw something today. I can't tell y'all here, but just stay up after lights out. I have an idea. Okay, okay. so just keep it on the down low. I got you, my guy. I got you, I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll see you again. Yeah, I'll talk to you tonight. Eat your soup. <laughs> yes, sir. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Father, we thank you for, God, this camp. We thank you for these young people here, Lord. Especially, I pray for Michael right now, Lord, and Ava right now, that, God, you will give them peace, that they will learn to trust in you with all their heart. And, God, that they will be able to lean on your everlasting arm. And, God, they can be able to run to you in their times of trouble. So bless them indeed and enlarge their territory. But, Lord, I pray for this for all our campers here this weekend. God, that you will keep and guide them in every way. Let them look to you, Lord, the author and finisher of their faith that may be kept by the power of God and the salvation. We thank you. We love you, God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Did I not tell y'all? Pass me one of those peanut butter crackers. Thank you. What do you guys think Mr. Denver was doing? I think he was praying for us. It's kind of where he I heard all of our names. He said Michael, Jaden, Katie. He started reading Bible verses. I don't think we should be doing this anymore. What do you mean? This is Chip's Gator. It's not, bro. We've been working for this. I know, but it's still in. And it's wrong. And it just don't feel right. Oh, it come just don't on. feel right, guys, man. Guys, this is wrong. I don't want to steal anymore. I'm getting out. Get it out.
Jaden Matthews, is that you? Get over here, quickly. What are you doing out of your tent? Move quickly. Welcome to Flatiron School. This is where you learn how the future works. Where the whole point of this way, Mr. Matthews. Have a seat. Have you lost your mind? I can't believe you did this. Mark, calm down. We've still got parents sleeping in the back. Have a seat, please. Mr. Deborah, I got it from here. Yes, sir. Jaden got caught stealing tonight, and it's very serious. It's grounds for dismissal. The whole family's gonna have to leave. Jaden, you got anything you want to say? Answer him. Hey, look, man, you don't have to talk to me like I'm a child, man. Yes, I do. You're acting like a boy when you should be acting like a man. A man? A man like you? You don't have the right to talk to me like that. Please, calm down. Calm down. Both of you take a deep breath. Take a deep breath, both of you. Jaden, why are you so mad at your dad? Because he's never around. He always everywhere else. Don't you give me that. I work. I work so that you can have all the things that you want. Jaden, what do you love about your dad? I don't. What do you like about him? He's a caring person. He cares for people. He has my back. <laughs> well, it's still very serious. And I'm gonna have to ask your entire family to leave. steal the food. We? But we were gonna put it back. What? I just, I don't want anybody else to get in trouble. Can we just keep this between me and you? Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Jaden, I'm gonna take you back to the tents. And Mark, you go ahead and go to the bunkhouse. Can I take them? Son. All right, campers, on your tent, on your feet, on your feet. Let's go. Move it, move it, move it. Move it, move it, move it. That's a first. Come on, campers, let's go. Campers on the back row. Come here on the front row. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the lights from above. From the mountains, through the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Attention to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag That's my of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm a 20-year military veteran. And in that time, 
I've seen many military members die, give their life for our country. I've seen many military members injured physically and some psychologically. Therefore, today, we're going to honor them by cleaning their headstones. Parents, you are able to participate in this event, but you cannot work with your child. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get to work. Hey, you're Kate's mom, right? Yes. She's really pretty. But... But... What? Nothing. No. What? She's really mean. Shh, we're not supposed to be talking. So who's your kid? You know the brothers, Cole and Michael? <sighs> Listen, I'm sorry if they've been causing some kind of trouble or... Is that what you do? You go behind their back and say you're sorry? Yeah. Yeah, my parents do the same exact thing. You know what though? I wish we didn't have to. Yeah, me too. Were you in the Vietnam War? Yes, I was. Thank you for your service. You're very welcome. You know, after the Civil War, nearly 700,000 men died. We didn't have enough cemeteries, so the military created these sites here. These are special places, dear. You see, everything we take in life for granted isn't free. These men and women, they died for our freedom. Jessica, that's my mom's name. Did she pass? No, my, my dad did recently. Building your online business? Go to Wix.com and set up your store on a single integrated platform. Add products. No, it's gonna be okay. Mom. 
tried to avoid this place. I tried to get out of it. It's okay. I'm listen, sorry. listen. It's okay. I'll see you Monday, and we'll work it out, okay? Just go with me and do what you're told to do, son. You're under arrest. Mr. Denver, may I see the paperwork, please? You're good. It's going to be all right, okay? We'll keep you up there. You could give me two days. That's all I needed was two days. So the weekend was over. He's one of my foster kids, and he had pending charges, and they're not pending anymore. But the judge could have given just two more days. You know, I've had over 40 kids, and I bring them here every time first because this place changes them, and they just couldn't give me the weekend. You fostered 40 kids? <laughs> yeah. You're a glutton for punishment. We can't even handle one. That's enough. Whoa. That's it, David. I've had it. What? Your constant comments. You're rude to everybody. What do you, you think you're better than everyone else here? No, I just... You, don't you understand that this place is for us to learn, too? You're not perfect. You think you are, but unless you realize that you're not, I'm leaving you. We're leaving you. Ashley. You got, no. Look over there. Our daughter is over there shoveling rocks, David. Shoveling rocks, not because of what she did, because of what we did. I'm done. That's my son right there. You know, sitting back looking at it now, I think I figured out the problem. We're going forward. If we don't make a change. We're gonna lose our families. Hey, buddy. Hey. What's going on? You all right? Yeah. Um, what's that? Okay, girls, deal. Uh, her deal is that she's 14, so... Okay. <laughs> What's really going on? I... I miss him. You know... Mm -hmm. He was like... A superhero, like, like Hercules. Yeah, and now he's gone. Accidents happen, dude. I... I, I miss him too, and uh, I'm sorry I haven't been there for you. I should have been. I should have been more responsible, and that's my fault. It's my fault we're stuck here. I'll do better in the future, okay? okay. I love you, buddy. Okay, let me ask you a question. What is wrong with kids today? Social media. Social media. Cell phone. Cell phones. Influencing from other kids. Other influences? Video games. Video games? Just disrespect. No respect. Can we tell you what the answer is? What? I'm looking at you. Let me tell you what I know after 21 years of working with kids. Our kids are the way they are. We call them we. I know you don't want to hear that, but I told you, I will not lie to you. It's time for a change. The question I got for you is this, are you ready?
this weekend, I just want to share with you and thank your parents and you guys for being here. It was our pleasure to serve you. And we thank you. We hope that you will be able to go home, have peace, and have unity in your families. Mr. Glenn has been doing this for many years. And I've been helping him just for a few. But his passion is real. And it is designed to help families push families to the full potential of unity and home. So give Mr. Glenn your undivided attention as he comes up. Mr. Glenn, they're ready for you. Have you ever said I'm sorry? If you were sorry, you would change your life. I've said I'm sorry many, many times. I kept on doing the same thing over and over. Well, guys, there's another word that's much more powerful than I'm sorry. That word is forgiveness. Forgiveness, it's a very special word. It comes right from the heart. I want you to stand up right now, everybody. I believe in second chances, third chances, fourth chances. And if you had another chance to start all over, a clean slate, would you take it? Would you be willing to say, hey, mom, hey, dad, I messed up. Would you forgive me? Mom and dad, could you say the same thing? Hey, none of us had a plan when we had these kids. Go to them and admit, I need forgiveness. I'm going to do a better job from here on out. If you feel that way, go right now. Don't wait one second. Parents, you move. Kids, you move right now. Recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana from StreamYard. I'm so excited to announce that Nice to see you, sir. Did you learn anything? You know, I think I did. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I'm sorry about the pants. Is... No more sagging. Yeah. I Promise. like it. Promise. <laughs> I heard you did very well in Success Camp. Thank you. And uh, I've got a little surprise for you. You do? I understand you like to go fast. <laughs> 